How do you do? Due to the subject matter in this episode, parental guidance is suggested. The Bible tells us that sin is sin, whether it's habitual lying, sexual transgressions, a single act of theft or murder, or even overindulgence in food or drink. Some in society try to exclude certain sins as acceptable ways of life, usually because they want to justify their own behavior. Come with us as we meet a young man who justified his behavior with the simple phrase, I was born that way. He followed that philosophy until the day his heart and mind and life were unshackled. Order number 72 at the pickup counter. May I help whoever's next? Uh, that's me, I guess. Uh, give me a, a burger meal with the works. Uh, oh, hey, buddy, quit shoving. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to. Ain't like I'm ordering everything on the menu. Uh, yeah, I think that'll do it. Uh, no, dude, what is wrong with you? No, I'm, I'm really sorry. Just give me some space. Sorry, it was just supposed to be a tap on the shoulder, but I got pushed from behind and... What do you want? I just wanted to ask you a question. Well, don't. I came in here for a bite to eat. I don't want to be bothered by... Where would you go if you died today? <laughs> what? Where would you go if, if you died today? Who are you? I'm a street evangelist. I, I tell folks about Jesus Christ. I, I want you to think about that question, too. And I want you to get out of my face. Spreading the good news that changes lives. This is Unshackled. True stories of real people dramatized and produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. Now for broadcast around the earth. Here is episode number 3648 in the series Unshackled. The program that makes you face yourself and think. The emerging self-realization of a child as male or female is a fundamental stepping stone of aging. For some, the struggle over gender identity or same-sex attraction produces such a fierce inner struggle for meaning that it can set their life off on a precarious course. Sometimes that struggle is lifelong. You're about to meet a man who faced such a struggle as we bring you the true story of Matthew Carrickner, right now on Unshackled. I was born New Year's Day of 1978 in Clearfield, Pennsylvania. I was the only child of parents who were deeply involved in their church. I went to a Christian school next to the church. And between that and attending services several times a week, I regularly heard the good news and memorized a lot of Bible verses. Dad and I were good friends, spending a lot of time together, hiking, doing projects and other father-son stuff. When I was seven, I knelt and prayed, asking Jesus to forgive my sins and save me. But when I was 12 and entering puberty, <laughs> things got complicated. Hey, did you see that new girl in homeroom today? Are you kidding? I couldn't stop staring. I didn't notice. Dude, she could be a model. There she is. Where, where? Over by the cafeteria door. She's so beautiful. Gorgeous. You guys are nuts. What? Are you high? Just like any other girl. Nothing special. What is wrong with you? Don't you like girls? I guess they're okay, but what's to get excited about? Are you some kind of freak that likes guys? Well, I, no, I, I'm just saying that I, I don't know what I'm saying. Well, stay away from me, man. Yeah, keep your distance, freak. <laughs> I took some schoolyard teasing in those days, but I just didn't develop a liking for girls. Instead, I gravitated toward guys. Now, since I was a Christian and knew that this same-sex attraction wasn't godly, I decided to pray about it and talk to my new beagle puppy. Snoopy, I don't know what it is. I know I should like girls, but I don't. I'm beginning to feel like a real freak. That's what they call me. The freak. Oh, God. 
take these feelings away. Please, help me like girls. Please take them all away. Why'd you make me like this? Why, God? <laughs> Snoopy demonstrated a kind of unconditional love. Nothing I ever said or did turned him away from me. I can't count the nights that, with him beside me, I cried myself to sleep, desperate for relief. Then I began to reason that God made me that way. Let me say right now that you may again hear me say, God made me this way. I believed that. However, that was my heart deceiving me. You see, the Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So with one baby step after another, I followed my deceitful heart. And I started making some new friends that encouraged me down that path. Matt, wait up. Ah, uh, hey Bill, how's it going? I got some new magazines. You gotta see them. Uh, nah, I'm not interested. Oh, these are different. They ain't girls. They're more to your, our liking, if you get my drift. Okay, uh, where? The woods, out by the highway. I got some beer too. And Jake may bring something stronger. Oh, sounds good, I'll get some smokes. <laughs> oh, them some pictures. Thought you like them. Hey, here comes Jake. Uh, hey, Jake. Hey, guys. I found my dealer and scored some blow. Looks like we're gonna get coke to the gills. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> the alcohol and drugs gave me the guts to do things my heart was prompting me to do. I was enjoying my new lifestyle more and more, and Snoopy <laughs> continued to show me unconditional love. After high school, I left home and moved around for several years, Pittsburgh, Boston, D.C., and as the cities grew larger, so did my involvement in the gay lifestyle. I enjoyed how I lived. But in another way, I didn't enjoy how I lived. That I kept to myself. And all the while, Snoopy stuck with me. Of course, he didn't have a choice. So what's it like for you? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, how you deal? I feel like I'm walking on a tightrope. What people think I should do, and then what I am. Feeling one way, wanting something else. It's so confusing. Yeah. Yeah, I was that way too. Then it hit me. God made me this way, so why fight it? I guess. Before long, you'll love life. <coughs> oh, I love you too, Snooper. Do you? What? Really love life? Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, almost as much as you love drinking, you lush. Ha! Can you tell I've been... Dude, you're three sheets to the wind. I'm surprised you haven't gotten fired yet. So am I. Hey, you drink as much as me. H how do you handle drinking at work? Ah, uh, mm, self-management? Yeah, that's it. Self-management. I manage myself, make sure I'm not too ripped before I get there, then I talk and work slow to help me think straight. Do that even when I'm sober so they can't tell the difference. Also, use eye drops. Eyes have to look clear. Uh, here, I got some. Oh, thanks, Matt. Well, seeing as uh, how I got to go to work now to manage myself, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> How's that? You sound better already. But don't talk too slow. You'll sound like a moron. Catch you later, man. I'll let you know how it went. Yep. That's the key, Snoopy. Manage yourself. But truth be told, I suppose you could say I'm a well-managed mess. And you're my assistant manager. <laughs> now, thanks for sticking with me, Snoopy. <laughs> The truth didn't have to be told, it was obvious. I was a well-managed mess. I say well-managed because I was living a double, 
Well, even a triple life. But there came a time when I finally had to tell my parents I was attracted to men. <laughs> as confident and self-assured as I thought I was, I just couldn't face them. In fact, I didn't even have the nerve to tell them over the phone. Hello, character residence. Richard speaking. Hello? Ah, uh, hi, Dad. Hey, son. Dad, I, I wanted... Carol, it's Matt. Well, it's good to hear from you. I got Mom here, too. Hold the phone where I can hear him. Hi, honey. <sighs> hi, Mom. I was about to say, uh... You know, I, I can't talk now. Uh, someplace I gotta be. Just wanted you to know I'm sending you a package. Uh, watch for it. Bye. Well, that was strange. What is it? Well, let's see. It looks like a stack of letters. Letters? Of what? Let's find out. Dear Mom and Dad... The only way to say this is flat out. I'm gay. What? Oh, oh, Matthew. God gave me a desire for men rather than women. I was born this way and have to follow how God made me. It's right for me. I'm happy like this. You probably remember there's been some of this in our family, so it shouldn't surprise you. I'm gay. That's the way it is. You'll have to accept it. What are we going to do? He goes on, but I can't read anymore right now. Oh, Matthew, honey. One thing for sure, we've got to talk with the pastor. Tomorrow's Sunday, we'll, we'll talk after church tomorrow night. I had a feeling something was wrong with Matt, but I never expected this. The next evening, our pastor came to our home, and I let him read Matt's letters. Thanks again, Pastor, for taking the time to meet with us. And for all your good counsel. I hope it was helpful. Oh, yes. At least we have a direction on how to proceed. Richard, Carol, one more thing. There's a spiritual battle going on here. Dark, sinful forces and influences are vying for Matt's very soul. So I've got two major instructions for you. First, pray. Pray shoulder to shoulder for Matt every single day. Second, fast. Skip meals occasionally and spend that time praying. This is fought with prayer and fasting. And this word of warning, do not expect this to be over anytime soon. We began an intense period of following pastor's instructions, praying and fasting, for the first two years, we were kind and loving toward Matt. Then we sensed the need for a little more firmness accompanying that love. Well, I gotta go. Tell Mom I love her. I will, son. And you know we both love you. No strings attached. I know. But Matt, we can never accept homosexuality as anything but sin. Dad. Just listen for a second. I'm going to read something from Scripture. Great. Leviticus 18, 22, gives God's view on the matter. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both, both of, of them, them have, have committed an abomination. Yeah, I know. But that's Old Testament stuff. Doesn't apply today. Okay, then. Here in the New Testament, it says in Corinthians, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. It's a sin. And like the other sins in that list, Jesus will forgive it if you ask. Matt, we will always love you. Never forget that. But what you're doing is a sin. Don't be deceived. Remember these words you memorized as a kid from Proverbs. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are, are the, the ways, ways of death. death. I know, I know, but I am what I am. Live with it. A while after that, Matt cut off contact with us, and we didn't hear from him for a year and a half. But the entire time, 
Carol and I continued battling in prayer for him. Unbeknownst to mom and dad, God was already working and had arranged three divine appointments for me. The first came even before they started their prayer battle. It was a September morning in 2001. I'd been out drinking for <laughs> I don't know how long, and I came back to my apartment in a drunken stupor. For some reason, when I woke up the next morning, I was thinking about those old end-time prophecies describing the destruction of the world that I'd heard as a kid. So to get my mind off of that, I switched on the television. And a second plane flew into the South Tower about 15 minutes later. Then in about 30 minutes after that, a third plane crashing into the Pentagon. Brooke, there are unsubstantiated reports of attacks on the White House and Capitol Hill. It's chaos here in lower Manhattan. We've also been receiving reports of people jumping to their death from the upper floors of the towers in an attempt to escape the flames. It's just after 10 o'clock here in New York. I'm going to try and, and talk with... No, 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 please, no. The tower's coming down! Run, run, run! It took me a while to actually realize I wasn't watching a movie. Then it reminded me of what our pastor told us about the last days. I actually thought this was the end of the world, and I wasn't ready to die. I just stuffed that back inside my head, but all the same, like everyone else, I couldn't forget that day. <laughs> the news kept reminding me. And each time, all I could think was, I'm not ready. The second of my divine appointments came a few years later when that street evangelist tapped me on the shoulder and asked, where would you go if you died today? I didn't let on, but it did serve as a mild wake-up call. By the time my third appointment came around, alcohol had given me bleeding ulcers. Cocaine use was causing palpitations and my promiscuous lifestyle bordered on prostitution. The appointment with God came on May 28, 2010. I was preparing to meet a guy from New Jersey that day that I'd met online. I was on the floor doing sit-ups when a real internal struggle began. I started recalling 9-11 and the street evangelist and then something more. <laughs> That's right, Snoopy. <laughs> Gotta look good tonight. <laughs> I haven't looked good in a while. What with all my physical problems? I've got to convert this flab to muscle. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Ugh. Where'd that come from? Why am I quoting the Bible? Why am I even thinking about the Bible? I got, I got my own life to live. I don't need... Oh, man, Snoopy, what, what am I doing? I've seen a lot of my friends die from suicide or overdose. Or, uh, am I next? Uh, God, God, I feel like a war's going on in my body. Please, God, stop it. No, I've got my own life. And you gave up yours. Okay, okay, I give up. I give up, God. God, I am a sinner with no hope aside from you. Jesus. You are Lord, and you died for my sins. Please, forgive me and take me back. I can't do it without you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I felt a great burden lift from me. I looked in the mirror, and for the first time in years, I had a genuine smile. I knew then 
what the Bible means when it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. <laughs> I guess I'd known all along that God still loved me. I'd experienced unconditional love from Snoopy, and I knew my parents hadn't given up on me, so I figured God was greater yet and loved me even more. I hadn't had contact with my folks for over a year and a half. I called, but when they saw my name on the caller ID, they wouldn't answer. My aunt found out and urged my dad to call me. Hello? Matt, it's Dad. Uh, didn't expect to hear from you again. You're my son. I love you. Dad? I'm back. I'm trusting the Lord now. I I've turned back to him. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, praise God. You know, I, I, I wish I could say it's all over, but my desires still aren't right. I still struggle with the temptations. There's still a war going on inside me, but... <laughs> well, now I'm on the right side. Oh, Matt, I can't tell you how that makes me feel. As for the desires, overcoming them will be a challenge. But just remember, 1 John 4.4 4 says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It'll be a battle, but you'll win out with God's help. I still struggled with Satan over a lot of the old sinful habits. And I endured what I call a two-month walk-off period. But God prevailed. I got back into reading the Bible and attending church, praise God. Funny thing, even Snoopy seemed to be more settled and content. After a few years, I made several short-term mission trips to Cambodia. One of them landed me in Bangkok, Thailand, and I found a church to attend. That first Sunday, the church greeter was a beautiful young lady named Rebecca. She met me with a traditional Thai greeting. Sawadika. 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 Oh, you are so tall. <laughs> you are tall, too. No, I am cheating. I am wearing high heels. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but your accent doesn't sound like you're from Thailand. That is because I am from the Philippines. My name is Rebecca. Well, nice to meet you, Rebecca. I'm Matthew. Uh, Matt. Uh, what brings you to Thailand, Matt? I'm a short-term missionary. Actually, I've been on several missionary trips to Cambodia, but recently I was transferred to Bangkok. Oh. What type of missionary work do you do? Teaching, building, translation? Actually... I do evangelistic work in red light districts, where I share the gospel with prostitutes, gays, lesbians, and transsexuals. Wow. I've never heard of missionaries to these people. Well, Jesus said, go ye into all the world. They're part of the world. I also do it because seven years ago, God saved me out of that world. Praise God. When I first met Rebecca, I had an immediate attraction to her, unlike anything I'd ever felt toward a woman, or even a guy. Eventually, we were married, and we now serve together in LGBT communities in the Far East. We also serve as a resource for churches there and in Pennsylvania. It's always nice to return to Pennsylvania and speak in some of the churches. It's been a great opportunity for both of us to go into the red light districts and present Jesus to those trapped in sexual sins. But we have also found that wherever we go, whatever church we're in, whether the Far East or Pennsylvania, there's at least one family in the church touched by the issue of gender identification and related sexual sins. If those issues involve your family, I urge you to love them but make known the truth of God's word. If you're wrestling with sexual issues, I tell you from personal experience, God wants to help. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This verse says that our fight is with demonic powers, and only God can help us win. The call of the Bible is the same for 
all of us, whatever our sin, deny ourselves and follow Christ. It can be done. (laughs) Praise God. Remember, your temptations are real, but temptations are not sin. You can choose to follow those enticements or lean on Christ. Don't be fooled by the argument, God made you this way, so you have to follow. This argument and these temptations are not God-given. Don't allow your temptations to define you. Let Christ define you. Don't trust deceptive feelings. Trust Jesus Christ. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and that the wages of sin is death. But Jesus Christ gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, do it today. Listening friend, have you ever bowed before Jesus Christ, the Lord of creation, and received him as your Savior? It doesn't matter what your sins are. You can receive him just as Matthew Karakner did. Repent of your sins. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as the only answer. Then receive God's gift of salvation through the blood of Christ. Friend, if God has been stirring in your heart, and you would like to follow Jesus, we invite you to pray a simple prayer with us now. Heavenly Father, I confess I'm a sinner. I believe Jesus died for me, and by faith I trust in his death as the penalty for my sins. I repent of my sins and receive him as my Savior now. If you prayed that prayer just now, We'd like to provide you with some additional information to help you in your new walk with the Lord. Or if you need help in making this crucial decision, get in touch with us at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Or call 1-888-NEED-HIM. Once again, the telephone number in Chicago is 312-492-9410. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, unshackled.org. This is program number 3648. Heard in the true story of Matthew Karakner were Tom McElroy, Judith Easton, Rick Dianofsky, Demetrius Troy, and Mark Forrest. Original music and audio engineer Don Badorf. Sound effects Demetrius Troy. Recording engineer David Pierczynski. Script Timothy R. Wise. And I'm Timothy Gregory. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today. Your letter means a great deal to us. The address? Pacific Garden Mission. 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. So, until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory reminding you that the doors to Pacific Garden Mission are open night and day. Thanks for listening. Merry Christmas, and may God bless you. 